Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Robinson, and we are going to continue our studies. This time we are reviewing for the grade 7 final exam. This is our part 1 show of the 2015-2016 year. So let's see. If you need help with your homework for any subject, there's dial a teacher homework help line, which is 212-777-3380 from Monday to Thursday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Don't forget to watch our show, Math Time, on Tuesdays at 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cablevision, Channel 15. You could also watch my YouTube videos and see our latest release, PKMS Math Prep 16. It's a very good movie. You can check out my videos. My channel name is Dan Robinson. So if you type that in to the search engine on YouTube, you will see a bunch of my videos. You can tweet me at drobmath1. So here's our first question. What is the solution of the equation below? We have 5 over 4x plus 10 equals 25. Okay, so let's see by working backwards. The first thing I'm going to do is the opposite of plus 10, which is minus 10 from both sides. What that does is it cancels out the 10, leaving me with 5 over 4x. 10 minus from 25 gives me 15. Now I got to solve for the x. So I'm having over here 5 over 4 times x. The opposite of multiplying, of dividing by 5, I'm sorry, the opposite of multiplying by 5 fourths times x would be dividing 5 fourths. So let's divide by 5 fourths. And that way, it'll cancel out the 5 fourths. But notice how I write this over here. So let's get a different color. Let's try black. So 5 fourths are going to cancel out, leaving me with just the x. But here I have 15 divided by 5 fourths. If you remember, we have to multiply by the reciprocal some people say KCF, that would be keep the first term, change to multiplication, and flip upside down the fraction. And we have 15 times 4 fifths. So let's put a little 1 underneath the 15 so we can multiply straight across. 15 times 4 is 60. 5 times 1 is 5. So we have an improper fraction of 60 divided by 5 and we can reduce that down to 12. So our answer would be for x will equal to 12. And if you want you can go back to your equation and put 5 fourths, this will be our check, and put inside there the number 12 which you got add 10 to it and you'll get 25. So let me just change color and put a 12 in there and I'll make that 12 over 1 so that way I can multiply my fractions. 12 times 5 by the way is 60. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 10 bring that down equals 25. Well 4 over 60, I'm sorry, 60 over 4, if you reduce that down, that reduces down to 15 plus 10. Guess what that adds up to? You got it, 25. So it does check out that our answer when x was equal to 12 that we replaced in here will work out for us. So that would be our answer and we solved it and checked.
So if you got the answer of 12, you're in good shape. All right, let's look at our next question. Which inequality represents the graph below? So here we have a graph. I notice there's a circle on the number negative 9 pointing to the left direction. So we want to know which of these inequalities represents the graph below. So let's see. When I notice I have an open circle, that means I'm using this symbol or that symbol, the less than or greater than symbol, because it's an open circle. If I had a colored in circle, I would have an equal to sign underneath that. So I tell my students, remember, if you have an open circle, there's no color on, under uh, in the circle, so that means there's no line under the, the symbol. If you have a colored in circle, that means you have a line under your symbol. So no line, no color. You got a line, you got color. So the first thing I'm going to notice is it's got to be these two. So now it's at negative 9. And I notice also it's pointing in this direction, which lets me know real quick that it's got to be one of the ones that is pointing to the left. So that makes choice D gone because it's pointing towards the right. So, but I still have to figure out where are they getting this negative 9 from? Well, if we have B plus 4 less than negative 17, let's make believe we had an equal sign there, so I would subtract 4 from both sides, and my 4 would cancel out. I'd have B less than negative 17 minus 4. Would that give me negative 9? No, that would give me negative 21. So that can't be it. So that's no good. If I add 4 to both sides, the 4s again will cancel out. I have B less than 17 plus 4, that gives me positive 21. So that's not it. That doesn't equal to negative 9. I'm trying to figure out which one equals to negative 9. So let's try this last one here, because it's got to be right. So let's add 4 to both sides. And the 4s will cancel out. I'll have B less than. Now i got a negative 13 plus a 4. If you remember, you have to subtract the numbers, so 13 minus 4 equals 9, and choose the sign of the larger digit. 13 is larger than 4, so I'm going to choose the negative sign, so that'll make this negative 9. So there is my answer, so that means it's got to be choice C. So my answer I'm going to choose would be choice C. So, let's see if it's right. Yes. Nice job. So, check your understanding. See how our little game is going so far, because in class we play it as a game. And if you're doing good and you understand everything so far, great. If you're not, you should rewatch the tape and write down questions for me, and I'll be glad to answer them. Here's another question. The area of a circle is 64 pi. What is the measurement? The, what is the measure of the length of the diameter of the circle? All right, so we have um, a circle, and it said the area of the circle is 64 pi. If you remember the formula for area, it's pi times r, which stands for radius squared. So this time they already give you the area. They said that was 64 pi. And we are looking for the measurement of the diameter. So we're looking for the diameter. Well, let's look at our formula and what we got down so far. 
we have 64 pi, which is area, equals pi times radius squared. Well, let's divide both sides by pi, so that way we can get rid of the pi and cancel out. So if the pi will cancel out, we have that gone from both sides, leaving us with just the radius squared. So now we're looking for what number times itself equals 64. And the way to deal with that would be to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 64 would be 8. And what that does, in turn, it cancels out the square on this side, leaving us with just the radius itself. Now, if you remember, a radius is a segment that goes from the center of the circle to the side of a circle. So the radius would be 8. But we don't want the radius. They said give us the diameter. So the diameter is the line that goes all the way to both sides of the circle. It cuts it in half. So that means this radius, by the way, is made out of two parts. One part here and one part there, which give us the whole line that cuts the circle in half, which would be the diameter. So the diameter would be 16. So that would be our diameter, and that's what we're looking for. So our diameter is equal to 16, and that would be our answer. So I hope you got that question, so let's check. Yes, so 16 is our answer. Good question. All right, here's one more for you. What is the sum of x plus 4y and 2x minus y. So here we got some polynomials and we have to find the sum. If you recall, sum is the answer to addition. So I have to add. I always made columns when I dealt with this. I had columns for this term and I call that my x term. So I would put whatever x's go in this column because I'm adding and I have another x over here so I'm going to put that one in there also so let's put our x's in that column so I'll put my first x and I got plus 4y and I have another 2x so I'll put that over here so that's in that column which I have to add up now my last column over here I have to put the other term which is the y's so I'm going to put a column labeled y and I'm going to put those in there. Now remember there's a sign attached to the 4 which is plus so we make that plus 4y or you could say positive 4y we're going to put that in there and here's a negative or minus sign and I'm going to attach that to the y and put that in there also. So now I have to do my addition. Well, I notice I have x plus 2x, and there's a number that should be here, and they don't often write it in algebra. That number should be 1. So you have 1x plus 2x gives you a total of 3x. All you do is just add the coefficients, which are the numbers in front, because they're the same type of variable terms. So these are the x columns. So, so far, we got 3x. Now let's add the y column. We have positive 4y or plus 4y plus a minus y. And again, they don't have a number here, so I'm going to put a number 1 here because in algebra they don't write the 1. So here I have a positive 4 plus a negative 1. You remember I taught my class, if you don't know how to add positives, what you do is draw four plus signs in a row and one little negative sign and cross out the positive and negatives because they cancel out and it'll leave you with what's left. And there are three positives left and so my answer would be a positive three. And don't forget the y. So my answer would be positive three y for the y column. 
So I have a polynomial consisting of 3x's and 3y's. So that would be my entire answer, 3x plus 3y. So I hope you got that right. There's your answer. So that was a good lesson. So I want to stop right there. If you understand what's going on, great. If you don't, write down your questions, bring them in tomorrow, and we'll be glad to answer them. But if you need help with your homework, there's Dial a Teacher Homework Help Line at 212-777-3380. That's Monday to Thursdays at 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Don't forget to watch our show Math Time on Tuesdays because that will help also from 4.30 to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cablevision Channel 15. Please write me on YouTube and give us a like and write a comment on what you think of the videos. If they're helpful or not, let me know so I can improve on them. Watch our other shows. We have our latest release, the PKMS Math Prep 16. And you can see my other study videos on my channel. Dan Robinson is my name. You could give me a tweet at DRobMath1. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Here's where we're going to pick up on our next study video with Jennifer can walk two-fifths mile in 15 minutes. If she continues at this rate, how far in miles will she walk in one hour? So there's Jennifer. So I hope you enjoyed our video and got something out of it. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.